Okay, hey guys, welcome to another video. You've seen the thumbnail and um, I'm bikeless at the moment. I'm not doing a Freddie Dobbs with a broken down bike, not quite, but um, yeah, it's not been the best. My, um, my Harley Davidson ownership has been fraught with problems ever since I bought the bike, or well, since I picked it up. Um, a couple of times in the videos I've mentioned that obviously I've been having problems with warranty issues and this and the other, but I've, I've literally just about had enough at the moment and um, I wanted to let you guys into a, a bit of a secret really. I've had the bike since August. I've loved the bike. I absolutely love it more than more than I ever thought I would or could. Um, I'm hoping that you've seen that in the other videos, the previous videos I've put out there already. But I can't stay quiet on this issue for any longer. It's um, it's something that's been doing my brains in. Um, the bike's been in the dealership again now for two weeks. Um, when I bought the bike, you know, let me take you back to the start. When I bought the bike, I I rode it home. I was happy with it. You know, I was I was over the moon, over the moon with it. And um, every, I, I, I tried to ride it as much as I could, but I, I come home, um, I bought the bike, I come home and I went on holiday for two weeks and I didn't even ride the bike until I got back, or I rode it twice. Um, when I got back off holiday, the first thing I wanted to do was get out on the bike and obviously get as many miles on it as I could and, uh, and enjoy the thing. And um, I had some issues with idling and I know before anybody cuts the video, they think they know what it is with the Milwaukee 8, the EIT MS, whatever it's called, this isn't the issue. It's a bigger issue than this. Basically, the bike will not idle right. Um, depending on obviously air temperature, um, you know the you know all, all, all a manner of things. Obviously, fuel. I'm putting the the, the sort of highest rated fuel I can in it. Um, the bike on cold start. For those of you who drove a car like I did when I first started driving in the nineties, um, had a carburetor on it. You had to use choke on a cold morning. My bike, when it starts, it sort of has a cold start function, like all engines do. It runs perfectly, absolutely beautiful. It loves it. You know, it's it's. 1000 rpm no problem at all it's running lovely once that cold start comes off 30 seconds a minute later something like that the idle drops and when the idle drops it doesn't drop to like a 900 revs or 850 or something like that like it normally should it drops down to the sixes which um anyone who's ever driven a car or a bike will know that's not healthy idle speed regardless whether the I e i t or whatever the hell it's called whether that's active or not i still have the same problem the bike does not like running and um, so much so that it cuts out and it cuts out, it's cut out on me twice while I was changing gear at a, a very busy roundabout where it was absolutely, I was petrified. I couldn't get the thing started again. <laughs> I was literally like, I didn't know what to do. Um, but yeah, um, the bike literally, if I start it up, for example, on a cold day or warm day, it doesn't matter when it is, if I start it up and I leave it running, within about two or three minutes, it cuts itself out. It just literally stops running. The idle gets that low that it sounds like it's, it doesn't sound like it's missing, it is missing, and it gets that bad that, you know, basically, long story short, I bought the bike from a, a dealer that's award-winning, and um, basically, I bought the bike from them, and I spoke to them, um, sorry, I spoke to my local dealer, which is in another county where I live, and I said to them, I've got a problem with the bike, and they looked at me and said, that's not a problem, let's get it in, we'll have a look at it, get it sorted for you. They had a look at it, and they said to me, yes, you've got a massive air leak, an air intake leak, which is on the, the cylinder head side of the air intake. They said, basically, we can replace the cheap plastic crap manifold, intake manifold, that, um, or the, the intermediate piece that uh, Harley Davidson fit from new. And they said, we can upgrade it to a cast part for you. Um, the cast part being a lot, to, you know, it's never gonna warp, it's never gonna have problems with heat, it's never gonna, you know, it's, it's always gonna be good. It's gonna have a, a gasket, a nice, good seal, never gonna have the problem again. So this dealer fitted this for me and it still had a leak. And they said basically there's nothing more they could do at the time because they didn't have any other manifolds in place, in stock. But they said it must be an issue with the manifold. So I said, okay, they kept the bike. Basically they kept it and said they're gonna try and replace it or to, to speak to technical and find out exactly what they can do with it. And again, I'm not gonna name any names, but this is my local dealer. Uh, the bike is only five miles from my house. So, you know, the, the dealership's only five miles from my house. After three weeks, I think it was the best part of three weeks, I was bikeless, it was the end of the summer, I wanted to use the bike as much as I could obviously, uh, enjoy the bike as much as I could. Um, I was bikeless and I, I said to them, have you got a loan bike or anything, you know, I want to I want to get out and get on the road and, and, and they said no, we don't have that, we only have a loan bike for routine servicing for customers to give on a day to day basis where we give it out in the morning and get it back that day. I said, fair enough, okay, no problem at all. So I contacted Harley Davidson Customer Services and said to them, look, I've just spent 16 grand cash on a bike 
I'm not happy, I've got a problem. And they come back to me with, well, your dealership, well, it's their responsibility to look after you. I've, re I, I've, re I've repeated this to my dealer. And I said to them, look, I said, obviously, customer service is a, a, about as much as good as a chocolate fire guard. They, you know, they've told me to come back to you guys. You're telling me, I never bought a bike from you. I get that. I understand that. It's frustrating as it is. I said, um, why, why can't you fix this problem? And they said, oh, because the last warranty claim it had, this was an issue they flagged then, and it should have been dealt with then. And I looked at the, the guy in the dealership, and I said, what are you talking about, the last warranty claim? He said to me, oh, the one that uh, you're, and he told me, obviously, the dealer that the bike come from, the one that they'd done while it was a demo bike of theirs. And I said, okay. I said, well, I wasn't aware of any of these issues. I didn't, you know, I didn't know this was an issue before I bought the bike. So I phoned them up, and I spoke to the salesman. And obviously the salesman is a salesman, He's, he doesn't know, if he does, I don't know, but he doesn't know the frustrations I'm going through now, he just knows he's got a sales manager he can go to and get him to call me. And the sales manager called me up and said, look, our service department are gonna get in touch with you, they're gonna give you a bike, they're gonna do it all, they're gonna pick it up, they're gonna drop the bike off to you, everything else, and get it sorted. And I said, oh, that is exactly the kind of service I need, that's exactly what I'm looking for, thank you very much. Well, I spoke to the service department at uh, the supplying dealer, and after a couple of weeks of them having the bike, they said, um, basically, there's an issue with the cast manifold that's fitted to the bike. And um, they said to me, you can have that part back. We're putting a plastic one back on, which is sealing lovely, and the bike's running fine. And I said, well, look, you know, it is what it is. I paid cash extra for the, for the upgraded cast one when it was in my local dealer. And they said to me, oh, go back to them and tell them you want your money back. That's, you know, as basic as it sounds. I said, all right, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. So anyway, I got the bike back. Um, I had to go and pick it up myself. And I was asked, because I had a demo bike from them, which I, I probably only put a couple of hundred miles on, but I was asked, oh, we need that demo bike back ASAP. Can you come and collect it? And I said, look, I was told collection delivery. And they said, no, we can't collect it this, this time without a charge of a hundred pounds um, for the service. And I said, oh, right, okay. I said, that's not what I was told, but you're the service department. And I spoke to the sales manager, so fair enough. Uh, you're telling me this and he told me that. I'm not going to argue. I'll just, I'll, I'll be over this weekend and do it. So I went to pick my bike up and um, I rode it away from there. And I'll be honest, it was nice to be back on my bike again. And believe it or not, I think because it's got more miles on, it seemed to ride better than the, the demo bike that didn't have any miles on. And also didn't have a miles per hour clock on it. It was only uh, kilometers, which was a bit frustrating for me to, to have, for, you know, in the UK. Um, there was nothing I could do to get miles per hour up on it. And I asked the dealership and they said, no, it, we haven't changed it over yet. That's how they come into us. So I said, okay. But anyway, I collected my bike and um, I brought it home. And it was better, but it weren't right. It still wasn't right. And um, it's to the point that, you know, I, I kept hold of the bike. Obviously, naturally, I, I kept it here and I kept on doing what I wanted to do to it, the upgrades of small little bits and pieces, the engine guards and all these things and getting myself happy with it. But I went to my local dealer um, with the box, with the, the part in, in the box, and I said to him, look, this part cost me 90 pounds, whatever it was, as an upgrade, as part, of the part of worry, uh, as part of the warranty claim. And I want to get me money back or a credit to spend in your shop, like, you know, in your boutique or your, you know, your parts department. And they said to me, well, why are you doing that? Why don't we just get you a new cast one under warranty? Because the plastic one that's been refitted by your supplying dealer is going to fail again. It's, it's, a, it's one of those things, they fail. I said, okay, so are you willing to get me another cast one and fit it? And they said, yes. Well, I obviously went home, said to them, look, you get the cast one in, you get it in once you've got it in stock, let me know, and I'll bring the bike back for you to fit it. And about two or three weeks later, I called the, my local dealer up again and said to him, look, I'm still waiting for you guys to let me know it's in stock. And they said, yeah, yeah, we don't have it yet, but we've got a batch of them coming, so as soon as it does, we'll let you know. So maybe another two weeks later, three weeks later, I um, I basically got in touch with them and they said, yes, drop the bike down to us. So I dropped the bike down to them. That was two weeks ago now. And um, they took the, the plastic one off and they fitted another cast uh, manifold and said to me, basically, they couldn't get it to seal. And I said, well, you know, where, where are we going? What, what's happening? Why, why can't we get this right? Then they said to us, they said to me, that we can't get the plastic ones to seal either. So it's, um, when it was, when it came into us, we didn't do a check first, but we should have done. Um, but the plastic one doesn't seem to seal. And I said, well, it's ironic really, because I haven't used the bike for a while. The weather's been crap, and as you can imagine. But when I started it up at home, um, I started it up in the garage, I took it outside, there's some footage coming up with me riding the bike. My wife was following me to the dealership because obviously I was dropping the bike there. 
And the engine management light came on while I was riding the bike and it started riding really lumpy and I thought, you know what, I'm doing the right thing. I'm absolutely doing the right thing, getting it back to them to have a look at it. I just wish I knew how to bring up the engine management light uh, codes. I, I know you can Google it, but at the time I didn't have the time. I was at the dealership. I didn't want to stand there on my phone YouTubing how to bring up the, the you know, the um, the engine management, um, just to work out what the code was. Because I'm 99% sure it wouldn't have been something like a low battery. It would have been something like this cold air, dense air at zero degrees outside is too much for the engine, uh, the engine control uh, module to, to gauge what's going on. A bit like a, I'm guessing a bit like a car with a math sensor. The engine will only know what the math sensor is telling it. Well, my bike must have some kind of math sensor on it. And that math sensor or mass airflow meter must have been saying that they, the air density is this, the air temperature is this. Why aren't we running right? And we're trying to, and you know, the bike threw a, a, a code up anyway. But look, long story short, I've had the bike in the dealership now for two weeks. And over three phone calls, they're still not getting any further with it. I was told that they're basically technical. Harley Davidson Technical have come back to them and said, um, we need you to measure the, uh, the the cylinder head and uh, see if it's a flat surface, a perfect surface. Well, I know even you know with an automotive background, even with a straight edge tool, you can stand and look all day at a cylinder head and think it looks fine, but it's not. You know, it's just one of those things. But my dealer are telling me now that they think obviously they put a request through to fit a new cylinder head on this Milwaukee 8 engine that's done 1,500 miles, which um, maybe it's a little bit more than that, 17, 1,800 miles. But it just makes me think, it just makes me think. And obviously, please, I appreciate your comments or your thoughts on this, this, this whole issue, I've got this whole saga. I spent a lot of money on the bike. And um, obviously, Harley dropped the model, the 107 engine, as far as I know, in 2021 in the US. And um, I'm guessing that's when production went to, because after Kansas City shut in 2020 or 2021, I'm guessing that's when production started getting uh, shipped out to Thailand. And my bike's a bike that's been assembled in Thailand, and I don't know if it's built engine-wise or wherever you know where it's if it's just a box of parts they put together in Thailand, or if it's an American engine, or but clearly there's an issue, and um, I just wondered if anyone else is having the same issue, if anyone else is having the same problem. But uh, Harley Davidson ownership is um, is a beautiful thing, but it's frustrating when the customer services and the technical or warranty, should I say, they're just not very good at making decisions or you know talking to dealers properly or they're just not very good at keeping the customer happy which uh, I can't believe I've, I've, I still can't believe I've got this issue with a bike that's not even a year old um, with an engine issue that I've come from an automotive background I've spent 16 years in a, in a dealership in this country or different sites but for a dealership a well-known brand global brand and um, we never had issues like this with with warranty if someone's car had a problem I'm not from service, I was always body, obviously body shop side, but again, we didn't have, if someone's car had a problem, customer services would deal with them, and they'd speak to us at the dealership and say, look, he's our customer, not just yours, we've got to keep him happy, we've got to make sure this this guy, you know, doesn't dirty the brand, or doesn't, you know, doesn't want to get rid of the car, or doesn't try and back the car, or whatever the issue was, I know bikes aren't cars, I know it's different, but whatever the issue was, we'd fix it. If a car was five years old and it come in, and it had a problem on it that wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, the owner's the owner's uh, fault. Say there was a convertible roof that had a leak, and there was a problem, the seal would split. They'd say literally, well, this, no matter how many oil changes that guy has paid for in our service department, that that seal failing, whether he had it serviced by us or not, that seal shouldn't be failing on a five-year-old car. It's going to cost a thousand pounds to fix it. Customer services wouldn't ask for contribution; they would fix it because that's not supposed to break at five years old. I'm not asking for that. I've got a bike that's, I've got brand new warranty for two years when I bought the bike in August. I didn't know this at the time, but buying a demo bike from any dealer, Harley Davidson will give you a two year guarantee, like you've just bought the bike new, even though the bike's three months old, four months old, however, um, however many months old it is. But yeah, frustrating times. I mean, obviously the thumbnail shows my bike's missing and it is definitely missing. And I don't know how long for. I spoke to my dealer today. Um, I phoned him up today again because they don't phone me up. I phone them up every week and chase it, and um, said, obviously, what's the the update? And um, they said there isn't one. They said that the um, the technician, their master tech, trying to uh, get warranty or get the Harley Davidson technical guy to agree to a, a new cylinder head, but at the moment he's taking measurements of a, a flat a flat surface and emailing backwards and forwards. I mean. Harley Davidson. I know you. I know Harley Davidson aren't going to see this video. I'm. I'm pretty sure of that. I've got 145 subscribers as of today. 
But if anyone knows what I can do to get to be taken seriously, really, other than going to the dealership and losing my temper, it's not their fault. It's a Harley problem. I get that, and I didn't. And, and, and I didn't buy the bike from them, so it's not like if I'd have bought the bike from them, I'd, I'd expect. Mind you, that's irrelevant, really, because you should get the same customer service. It's the brand, isn't it? I know. I understand it's a franchise dealer, so it's not Harley Direct. I wish it was, because at least then you know maybe I'd get a bit further. I worked for a retail group for a company, so we were reporting to France. We were reporting to their, you know, to, to the bosses. So I didn't. I didn't work for an independent uh, guy who who made the decisions for the place. It was all done through France. But um, yeah, I just, I just, I'm really disappointed to be honest, and I can't pretend anymore that I'm. <laughs> I am happy with my bike, but I can't pretend anymore that it's all uh, it's all flowers and rainbows and everything else. When if you if you've got the money to spend on a bike, or if you you know you you put that money out, invest it in a bike yourself, you'd be heartbroken or you'd be well pissed off. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm I still love the bike. I want it back fixed. I love the bike more than I ever thought I could. I, I absolutely I, you know it's it's for me. But um, I just wish I didn't have this problem with it. And um, I can't be the only one who's suffering with it. And what's frustrating again is that surely customer service might, uh, customer services must know I'm not the only person suffering with this. I must be, you know, there must be others. If they've got a, a machined um, cylinder head problem, flange problem, obviously where it meets the, uh, the air intake manifold, then surely I can't be the only one. If there'll, there'll be thousands of them until they realise that there's a problem. And maybe they haven't realised there's a problem, but... Buying a 2023 bike, you'd expect, it's been around for five years, you'd expect all the issues to be resolved, any production issues, or if it was a brand new model, brand new engine, everything else, you go, well, you know, I'm a, one of the unlucky people who's bought one. You'd say fair enough, but um, no, this model's been going for so long that, you know, they, the engine itself, I don't know, again, if it's a 107 problem, I don't know, I don't. I just don't know, but please, if anyone can give me some uh, some inspiration, really, as to... You know, have, have, has anyone else suffered with this? Has anyone else had a problem with this? The dealership that I deal with and the uh, the dealership that I bought the bike from are fully aware that there's problems with these engines, problems with these air intakes, problems with the plastic parts melting because they they're in a plastic they're they're a, they're a plastic part in between two cylinder heads and two cylinders that gets very hot and um, the plastic part, in my opinion, Harley should never have fitted. They've done it for weight, for cost, I guess. They should never have fitted them in the first place. So. It's a it's a screaming eagle upgraded air intake, so it's an official Harley part. Why is it not uh, Why is it not fitting? Well, it's the cylinder head. <laughs> Harley Davidson do not want to admit it, but at the moment I'm not too bothered. It's January. Um, I've you know I wouldn't really be riding a bike. I mean, we had a lovely day Friday, but I was at work all day. It was 12 degrees, sun was shining. I would have loved to have got out on the bike, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the summer. I've got a trip. Um, I'm going to hopefully, if I've got the bike back by March, I'll be going away over Easter on it. Um, and I've got another trip. I've actually booked the time off work already. Um, I'm going to be going down to the Pyrenees on a bike and all around Spain, really. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to get the ferry from uh, Bilbao, Santander or Bilbao, and I'm going to go across to the Pyrenees and down to Zaragoza and across to Barcelona and maybe even Valencia. That far south, I know, but I've only got a week off work. Um, what a week I've got seven working days out so um, it'd be about 10 days to be away but um, yeah I'm looking forward to that so uh, that's coming it's a long way off yet I know but um, but look hey again any inspiration any help anyone could be any sort of um, you know if you've had the same problems please do let me know um, or if you've got any advice you know any if, if you have had the same problem and, and how have you fixed it or how long it take uh, how long it took to get resolved what steps you took, I'd really appreciate it. So I'm asking for help really guys, I'm frustrated. I love it, but I'm frustrated. So thanks again for watching. Um, hopefully this hasn't been too long. I've, there's not much editing to do for this one, but um, yeah, hopefully it's not been too long and um, please do like, comment, subscribe. Thanks very much guys.